Hello everyone, it's Kale and today I wanted to give you my updated thoughts on the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. After one month of daily use, a full-on hands-on review of new upgrades, features, pros and cons. So, we've got a brand new 200 megapixel camera on the S23 Ultra. Enhanced display, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip across all the devices, 8K video recording in 30 frames per second and long-lasting battery and a super steady mode. But are these changes enough to justify an upgrade to S23 Ultra? So, if you are thinking of buying the S23 Ultra, hopefully this video will give you an idea of what to expect. So, the Ultra means high-end specs, the biggest numbers and the most features overall. And yes, the S23 Ultra doesn't miss a beat with all the Ultra stuff. They pack the highest end chip especially optimized for the S23 lineup, which is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, 12GB of RAM, 256GB of storage and up to 1TB. It's a huge 6.8 inch 1440 Quad SD Plus with dynamic AMOLED 2X with 120Hz refresh rate which can scale down to 1Hz and a max brightness of 1750 nits. These phones are all sunlight readable. This year Samsung retained some of the curved screens and they have made it somewhat less curved. Which means you got to use the flatter surface of the screen area before it starts to slope off. It's a good careful balance. The battery lasted more than 12 hours in adaptive mode where the screen can go up to 120Hz which involves me checking my socials, watching YouTube, filming videos and taking lots of photos. If I can make it till the end of the day without a single charge, I'm very happy with that. That's good enough to call it the best phone battery life. From the numbers, we are looking at 45 watts of fast wire charging and 15 watts of wireless charging. That means at its fastest rate, the S23 Ultra can go from 0 to 100% in little less than an hour. There are no major new Aspen features for the Galaxy S23 Ultras, but it is still a valuable tool for taking notes, drawing and sketching, and you can still use it as a remote control for the camera to take a selfie or record a video. I find it very useful for signing documents and editing photos and videos. Let's address the elephant in the room. We have a new 200 megapixel primary camera with double the optical image stabilization range as before and new sensors across ultra wide, 3x telephoto and 10x periscope camera. Samsung says this sensor can deliver poster size prints. Is it a overkill or a game changer? But that's not the only benefit of having a main wide camera this powerful. The adaptive pixel sensor can combine 16 pixel into a larger pixel for brighter and more detailed photos, especially in lower light situations. Photos are typically pretty warm with Samsung phones and slightly punchier, more contrasty look than before. But on top of that, having these new sensors and optical image stabilization, that means you can shoot literally 200 megapixel photos now. It captures finer details. But you should also know that these new sensors are only able to give you tons of details in excellent lighting conditions where the light is hitting every individual little pixel. Anything other than that, the photos can be noisy. And the camera sort of lag is still there, mentioning the 50 to 60 megabytes file size for a single picture. Regards, this mode would be great for landscape or subject is still sitting or a photo shoot. There is also a 50 megapixel camera mode where you can still take detailed photos but this time the file size is around 5 to 6 megabytes and there is less sort of lag but there is still that improved detail and much less noise. I guess it's all about flexibility. The standard mode is going to be the best for most shots and most of the time but you have a 200 megapixel camera to take a photos if you want to. In addition to all other features, the 8K video on this smartphone is very useful and practical despite not being the first phone to have this capability. Previous phones that offered 8K video could only record at 24 frames per second due to technical limitation, which resulted in a poor quality. However, this phone can record at 8K 30 frames per second, making the video much sharper and clearer. Comparing it with a 4K video shows a significant difference in sharpness when zooming in. A sample video will be uploaded on my YouTube, where I'll be shooting 8K cinematic footage with this phone, so please stay tuned for that. And if you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button. Your support means a lot to me. The new S23 Ultra phone also have a 12 megapixel selfie camera that is superior to the 40 megapixel camera on the previous model. This proves that megapixel are not only the factor in determining the quality of the camera, as better software processing leads to a sharper, more detailed and more colorful images. The camera also has a decently wide angle, though it's not ultra wide. 
Overall, the camera is a significant improvement from the previous model, particularly the primary camera which is often overlooked in the reviews. One thing I wish Samsung would have fixed is there is still a noticeable subtle lag, which can be frustrating when trying to capture a moment. This is particularly evident when taking high resolution photos which cannot be taken in rapid succession. The base storage has increased from 128GB to 256GB as of the base model and faster UFS 4.0 storage. UFS stands for Universal Flash Storage, just in case you're wondering. It is the fastest flash memory in the world, which can read and write two times faster while consuming 46% less power than UFS 3.1. This phone impressive features such as new chip that enhances overall performance, making the phone more efficient and improving battery life. The camera also has better sensors, processing and stabilization. The phone's A plus display with its high resolution 120Hz LTPO display and 1750 nits peak brightness is still excellent as are the speakers. The software reliable and regularly updated without any delays, the stylus is still the best in any smartphone and is useful for marking of screenshots or signing documents and so many more amazing features have given the users a different experience compared to other high-end smartphones. In short, the phone sets a high standard in every way, making it worth the high price tag. It may seem like not much happening from last year's 22 Ultra, but it is an improvement over the previous model and sets the bar for future smartphones. So, I think most of the new features that we have seen on the S23 Ultra are nice to have, but none of them makes a justifiable upgrade if you already have an S22 Ultra. Saying that, if you want the best Android phone with all those new upgrades and features, you cannot go wrong with the S23 Ultra. The new 200 megapixel camera sensor will alone make a noticeable difference in any photos or videos. Well, this is the end of this video, and I just want to thank you for staying till the end. Please leave a comment below about what you think. Are you going to buy Astron Ultra?